Are you looking for an unusual looking pollinator magnet that will bloom in the heat of summer and is tolerant of a wide range of garden conditions? The wildly weird Rattlesnake Master Eryngium yuccifolium may be the plant for you. Rattlesnake Master is truly odd looking in a super cool way. and has an awesome name which we'll get to in a bit. But just what is this weird plant? Rattlesnake Master looks like a plant made up of the top part of a thistle stuck onto a yucca plant, but it is not closely related to either one. In fact, it is a member of the carrot family, which normally look more like this, with a flat top flower cluster called an umbel and finely dissected foliage. Rattlesnake Master still has an umbel of flowers, just shaped a bit differently, and its long fibrous and spiny leaves may look different than other carrot family plants, but they have their own coolness. Much like the yucca which Rattlesnake Master gets its species name from, the leaves of Rattlesnake Master contain long fibers that run the length of the leaf. The leaves and fibers are tough and were used by the Native Americans to make such useful items as footwear, clothing, bags, and cordage. Try doing that with a carrot leaf. They had other uses for the plant, but I'm getting ahead of myself. The tough fibrous leaves and the spines that are found along them make Rattlesnake Master about as deer and rabbit proof as a plant can be, a huge plus in the eastern U.S. Rattlesnake Master has a large native range in the eastern U.S., being totally absent only from most of New England. It was once quite common, but it has disappeared over much of its range as the grasslands it was found in were converted to agricultural use and homes or reverted to forest as fire, which kept the grasslands, well, grasslands, was suppressed. If you think Rattlesnake Master is a super cool native plant, flutter like a hungry monarch, and pollinate that like button. Rattlesnake Master is a good sized plant and will get four to five feet tall with a two to three foot spread. It will form offsets from the base of the plant and slowly form as a clump. These offsets can be divided off and planted elsewhere if desired. It requires full sun and will grow in a wide variety of soils from medium to dry, but must not be planted where there will be standing water. Temporary and occasional flooding will be tolerated, but is not preferred. Poor soils are fine for growing Rattlesnake Master, and in the wild it is often found in sandy or rocky soils and even growing in glades. Too little sun or too rich of soil may cause these large plants to fall over and sprawl, so be sure to pick a spot for them carefully, and do not use fertilizer on them. Rattlesnake Master has a large taproot and can withstand drought once it is established. Of course, that big, long, deep taproot makes moving them nearly impossible, so be sure you plant it where you're gonna be happy with it for a very long time. The root and other parts of the plant were used medicinally by the Native Americans for a wide range of ailments, although it seems it was most used for stomach ailments and for the treatment of snake bite, which is where the common name comes from. Modern medicine has found no medicinal qualities to the plant, but it is a strong emetic. It makes you puke. And this is likely the reason Native Americans used it to treat stomach ailments and snake bite. Some researchers also believe that it was the emetic added to the black drink during Native American purification rituals. You can learn more about black drink and the native holly that it's made from in this video right here, after you finish watching this one, of course. I love native plants, especially those that are far from normal. If you have a favorite wildly weird native plant, let us know about it down in the comments. I may make a video about it. The distinctive spiky looking flowers of Rattlesnake Master look more like a medieval weapon than a flower cluster, but they are not prickly at all. The greenish white flowers are present from June through August and will turn a bluish green with silvery highlights as they mature. The flowers have a sweet honey scent and attract a wide variety of pollinators, including native bees, honey bees, wasp, and especially butterflies of all types, including that most famous one, the monarch. The pollen is fed upon by several species of beetles. Seeds form in the flower heads in the fall and are eaten by several species of finches and sparrows, but are not a major food source for them. However, the seed heads do add fall interest to the garden. In addition to being an absolute pollinator magnet, Rattlesnake Master is the sole host plant for at least two species of moths. The Rattlesnake Master stem borer has larvae that feed on the stem pith of the flower stalks, and a tiny moth with no common name, Coleotechnites originalia, has larvae that live in the flower heads. Both species have declined greatly as the grasslands that supported large tracts of Rattlesnake Master have disappeared. The Rattlesnake Master stem borer has been discussed for listing under federal species protections, but has not been listed yet.
If you would like to learn about some other plants that bloom in the heat of summer and are host plants for a wide variety of species, check out this video right here on milkweeds and be sure to get out and explore nature in your backyard.